Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping into a different kind of mod pack. This one is called Mechanical Mastery. Hopefully you guys are ready. So yes, this is a Skyblock pack, and just like many Skyblock packs, we have a tree right in the middle of an island, but this isn't your normal Skyblock mod pack. No, 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 no. There is a lot that is going on at the start of this pack. One includes EMC, and well, that means we are going to have a much different start than normal. You can see EMC in the top left corner, and of course, logs have some EMC. But where things get interesting is within our quest book. So on the main view here, we're going to be adventuring through a tech progression, and uh, this is going to lead us into some really cool mechanics, I think. Uh, so right off the bat, it says mechanical mastery is an expert yet not horribly grinding skyblock mod pack. And I really like the uh, the idea of that. And it says it's focused around automating everything in order to keep progressing. And EMC has been completely overhauled. Uh, and the only raw, the, the only thing that's emc -able is the raw resources. And then we're going to be producing these like cube or mechanical essences that we're going to use to progress into each tier. And that's kind of cool because I've played other games that sort of use this same sort of mechanic and when i say other games like not minecraft like uh dyson sphere program for example uses these cubes so this is pretty cool and uh yeah we are going to get started with some emc now our first tier that we're going to be working on today is thermal and we're going to be able to get right into thermal straight from the start this is going to be how we get started so we have the welcome which is where it all begins this is the first step in our journey and this is going to give us several different items, one being a transmutation table. How awesome is that? And uh, now it does warn me here, do not make the mistake of using these items without EMCing. If they have EMC, use them. Uh, like just go ahead and just try to dump anything and everything you can. Just try and dump it into this. For example, just shift and drag and anything that is EMCable will automatically go in here, it will burn it up, but it's going to go ahead and give you the EMC equivalent for that. Um, so I can just go ahead and pull a sapling out and you can see it's gonna pull that 32, but if I put it back in, well, it gives the 32 back. So it's able to be pulled back and forth. Now we also start with a lava bucket and water, which is nice because we are gonna need that and infinite water. Uh, and we're gonna need this for some cobblestone. But first, let's go ahead and use ulti mine, which is the grave key, which is underneath your escape key. If you hold that down, you can even hold shift with it and change its shape. But this is going to allow us to, well, do the sky block thing, which is pretty cool. I also love how there's a chest down here. We're going to open that here in a second, but we can place a tree down and actually do the whole twerking thing. Yeah. Where we grow a tree by shifting clicking. I really like that where you just, you hit shift over and over again. Um, it's going to allow us to grow our trees a lot faster. And this is going to be our primary way of getting EMC early on from the looks of it. Uh, now what's inside this special chest? Ooh, we get another transmutation table and we get an extra set of lava and water and more saplings, which is a little bit more EMC going into here, which is all very nice. And we also get ourselves a nice little starting chest, even though that's probably the simplest thing we can make here. Now on this island, we have a little bit of dirt, but the cool thing about the dirt being right here is, well, it's also EMCable. So go ahead and get yourself some dirt. I'm going to be doing that. And I think I am just about ready to get started into the progression. Talks about getting wood, which is uh, something that we're in need. And this is going to be our primary source of EMC, EMC, like I had mentioned. And this is how we're going to get started with a lot of our resources. This is kind of the, the best part. We just hit accept and well, we get clay balls. That is how we're gonna learn our resources. Uh, we do need to make a cobblestone generator, which is probably one of the first things that we need to get done. Now to make this cobblestone generator, I'm gonna be making probably one of the most simple early game cobblestone generators you can make now in the newer versions of Minecraft. And that's simply placing a stair with the back facing this way. Boop, hit that with some water and then place our lava and cobblestone will be generated just like that. And it's very compact. And whenever the next one pops in, we get ourselves some cobblestone and our quest here really opens up. Uh, and so now we can put cobblestone in here. We can pull that out. And we also get access to redstone or we get access to iron and all of the other resources 
Yes. So gold, everything. And this is going to allow us to jump right into the mods immediately. No need to grind. Oh, we'll be doing the grinding later. I'm almost positive we'll be doing that grinding. So there's the nickel, which is going to be used for making alloys. And then bauxite, which is later on going to be used to make aluminum, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, so our next step is automatically starting to think about automation and getting into power and everything like that. So the start of this mod pack is quite fast and I'm going to be, yeah, diving into the fun stuff in just a moment. Now, another cool feature of this mod pack that not many mod packs think about, especially with Skyblocks, it's starting to get dark. And of course we can sleep through the night, but that means time is going to be changing a lot. And do we really need darkness at this current moment? Not necessarily. So inside of the quest book, it talks right here with the configuration panel. And we can actually click this button and it is going to set it to permanent day. And we can always revert that by clicking this button and it will change the game rule. So instead of, you know, we have to do it normally manually, we can change it here. We can also stop the rain, which is something that I normally like to do because there's really no need for me to have rain going on. And then we can also change our game mode, keep inventory. I'm not really worried about that. And I do actually like phantoms. Uh, but we will actually, if it's always day, we'll never have phantoms happen anyways. Um, but that's something we're not going to worry about later on is changing that back so we can get phantom drops. I don't really know how much we're going to need phantom drops, but yeah, it is an option. Now, like I said, my main source right now of EMC is going to be trees. So getting ourselves a little area to get trees set up and getting the logs, which are the main source, by the way, of EMC. And we don't really have to worry about saplings either because one log is the equivalent of a sapling. So if, if we get 15 here, we all automatically get a sapling back. Um, so we are getting a net gain, but I'm going to need to do this quite a bit to get a, a decent amount. I wouldn't say a whole lot, but we are going to need a little bit to get started so we can pull out iron and things like that. Um, and uh, I think basic furnaces are how we are going to get some of our first items here. Now, I honestly believe with this pack, we're going to have to think big here. Um, starting small, of course, is going to be something that we do right from the start, but we are going to have to scale up. Everything is going to have to be done on its own. So we'll eventually need an entire line that's producing raw iron, a line that's producing lead, a line that's producing silver and so on and so forth. And to do that, it looks like we are going to be getting into EMC links, which allow us to pull items directly from our EMC pool and take those items out of our table and allow us to automate with them. This is such a cool mechanic and I really love mod packs like this. So this is gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of fun, I think, getting into this. First, I need to make an engineer's hammer, which means I'm going to need some basic iron material, but our ultimate goal is to be able to make these basic uh, mechanical essences. Um, to make this, it looks like we need to do some automation, thus getting into thermal and getting into a sequential fabricator, which allows us to do automatic crafting. All of this is going to really jumpstart our progression. If we get this first page done in literally today, that is going to be amazing. Now, thankfully, we have quests throughout this entire mod pack. There's still a lot of stuff that the quest doesn't necessarily mention that you would kind of have to look through the mods to kind of discover. And we'll get into those later. But the engineer's hammer is one of the first things I need to make. And this is going to allow me to make a plate, it looks like. From, yeah, we can just make plates. Look at that. Uh, that's going to be super handy. It's a quick way of doing things, but of course we want to automate later on. Get a little bit of experience for that. And that is going to lead into the basic essence, which is what we are going to need. Now this gives, does give us some tips for automating, which we're going to have to work on later. Basically it's saying the EMC links will output one item per second, and we are going to want to make sure to limit um, how much items, how many items we're actually pulling out of here. And early on, we actually don't have a way of automating EMC gain just yet. And I'm kind of curious if this is how we're going to gain EMC early on is through these basic mechanical crystals uh, by taking the raw material and sort of getting more EMC out of it. I think I'd have to do the math and figure out how much EMC technically is in all of these items first. So if you're doing some quick maths, it does seem like that is initially how we're going to do that, which I guess it does tell you here, has an EMC value higher than the sum of its parts. Um, but it doesn't actually tell you how much. And from the looks of it, not counting coal, 
which is definitely something worth keeping in mind. But later on, we'll probably have infinite uh, tree resources and things like that to burn fuels. Um, but it looks like 2,560 is the total cost of the EMC value for these items. And thus, in return, you get 8,000 back, which is a net gain of roughly 5,632 EMC per process, um, which is not bad. That's going to be a way that we actually get things started, I, I guess. So first things first, we definitely want to get this going as soon as possible. I'm going to need a lot more space. Yeah. And so we have chisel, which is really nice. This is going to allow me to chisel up some blocks. Like we can put wood in here, chisel up wood. One of the cool parts is definitely cobblestone as it's so cheap to, to produce. And uh, we can get this all chiseled up. And let's see, I know this isn't the best looking block in the world. Once we get some stone, I think it'll be a little bit nicer looking. Um, But we could probably border out with like this material. And if we take a look at the connected texture, we can see what it's actually gonna look like. And this solid texture is actually really, really good looking. So I'm probably gonna do a border with this and then the middle with this. And I'm gonna get a basic platform because I plan on building a factory uh, out eventually. So with the connected textures on, we can go ahead and chisel everything and we can start building off. Well, there we go. So I'm gonna start building around this platform and get myself a nice little area started because we're gonna need a large area to get trees up and running. And we're also gonna need some space to get piping going. Uh, so we can start moving items from one place to another. Now, building out the edges, I'm using these diagonal oak plank stripes, which I think look really cool because this is going to have an industrial feel and it, it really has that look here. But I'm going, uh, doing nine by nine. So doing the typical dire thing, nine by nines. And we have uh, the block on the corner. So I'm basically going dot one, two, three, one, two, three. Keep it in mind, I got to do this three times. One, two, three, and then dot. Uh, yeah, m music style <laughs> with the dot, dot, dot. Now, functionally, this looks like every other Skyblock build ever, but I promise you that this is merely to get the first set of automation started. And uh, as I did normally chosen fashion, I will eventually tear this whole thing down and I will start from scratch once I have more resources. Now, of course, another useful building tool that I cannot forget to mention is the wands and we can make ourselves an iron wand very quickly. And uh, this will make it so much easier for me to expand out the platforms. Um, now I am going to put dirt in here on one of these platforms because we are going to need it. But this just makes it so much easier to get the majority of the material laid out. So of course, even though this is a temporary setup, I am I still gotta make it look a little bit better than just plain blocks on the ground. So I have some logs here where it makes it kind of look like it's connected to something and I'm getting my chest set up the cool part about the transmutation table is you can actually place it on the sides of things. So I can place it on the side, I can place it on the top of a block and do all kinds of goofy things with it. Of course, we're gonna need place to store some blocks until we get a storage setup going later on down the road, but this is going to work out quite nice and gives me a nice little space right here to get some trees growing. Now, so far, it's a lot of just going back and forth at the start and getting yourself enough resources to get some iron and so on and so forth. Um, and then now I'm going to need to use an iron pick to get myself the redstone from the ore. Um, but really it's sort of a back and forth, like I said, early, early game. And uh, that's gonna hopefully change now that we're gonna be diving into the machines. So taking a look at the machines, the basic beginning is going to require me to have some gold, some stone, some uh, quite a bit of iron, believe it or not. All of this for a sterling dynamo. This is going to allow me to start producing some power. And then we're gonna to need to get into the power mod to make some basic energy cables. So that way we can lead the cables over to all of our machines. And this is gonna require dielectric paste. It's not that bad to make. You definitely wanna go the clay ball, the coal and the redstone route. And uh, this will get you the dielectric paste. Of course, more iron, like I said, a lot of iron. And then even for the capacitors, it's iron and then redstone. So it takes a little bit of EMC to get started in this route. But I think once we get that going, uh, that grind is going to not be as bad uh, because we'll start to be able, we'll start to passively produce EMC at a slow rate. So what I'm basically saying is get ready for tree farming simulator because that's what the early game primarily consists of.
Now, one way to make this farming a little bit easier on yourself, as you know, you're probably struggling with the same issue I was having, and that's the saplings being in the appropriate location. Well, you can only grow them up to two blocks away from you. So it only grows it in a five by five area. So a nice little nifty way to do that is by going up three blocks and placing a slab on the top and a trapdoor on the bottom. And uh, this is kind of handy because what we can do is now stand in the middle of our trees, of course, filling this entire area up like this, giving us a lot more trees and allowing us to grow them all and not have to worry about the crouch issue. Yeah, where the grass or the leaves grow where you're crouching. So you can maintain your crouch and continue to twerk it up and get all of the all of the logs you could ever desire. So now with the Sterling Dynamo, I can get started with some power. And I wonder what this quest gives me. Oh, more experience. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll get some basic cables going. And then I have to make, I think the next in the line uh, should be the pulverizer, which we're going to be using to get the dust, which we're going to need all of these alloys. We're going to need bronze. Constantine and Invar. All of those are going to be the different components that are going to be required for us to make the press. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a thing. So induction smelter eventually, and that's where the Invar comes into play. Uh, this will make things a little bit nicer for us. But what eventually, yeah, I think we're going to need more than one Sterling Dynamo for sure. Now, I almost skipped over this because I'm so used to making this, but this is the crafting station. And to get this, you just recraft your crafting grid. And it allows me to access the chests that are adjacent to it, that are connected to it, giving us a nice little way to start off. And uh, as you can see, I don't have anything in the grid, but I can go ahead and, for example, craft this paste from the two chests that are connected to it. Pretty neat, huh? Now, to get a basic little setup going, all I have to do is make sure to provide this with some sur sort of uh, burnable fuel. We can use planks, we can use logs, we can use uh, charcoal and coal, uh, as we do have EMCable coal. But what I'm going to need to do is have a pulverizer set up and this pulverizer can go right here for now. And we have the furnace right here. And I just simply need to hook up some cables just like this. Very straightforward and simple. And the good part about these particular cables from uh, Pala is you can walk right through them. So you don't have to worry about jumping over them or tripping or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I got to get some fuel. That's going to be very important. And uh, well, that does cost some EMC as a full stack of coal. Yeah, it doesn't come cheap. So yeah, it looks like we're gonna be farming some more wood. Now the good part about this little setup as we're gonna be working mostly with the pulverizer right now is well, I can actually farm the coal with the coal. So we're gonna at least be doubling, I believe with this coal. So by default, yeah, we have a 50% chance to have an additional. Uh, so it is better to do it this way. It's almost like hitting it with some fortune and that should start putting it in here once this has enough power, which it doesn't just yet. Once this fills up, it will. And uh, yeah, we need to configure the sides. This is going to be what we do a lot. So the top and the side, the orange is output, blue is input, and make sure to have it auto enable. That's a good part about thermal. I really like thermal. So this is going to be pretty fun. I think uh, getting this basic startup going, once I have enough resources, then we can just start making multiples of these machines and sort of scaling up our operation. Now I'm currently pulverizing a few different materials, uh, basically copper, I have some nickel that needed to be processed and some tin. All of this is getting combined together and this is how our we're, our early process is going to be of, uh, of combining and getting Constantine and getting bronze. So Constantine blend is going to be the copper nickel. We can blend that together just like so. And we're gonna need uh, eight of these in total. So eight of the blend, and then we can just smelt that just like so. I know we have this smelter over here, but I'm not going to use that one just yet. We will be using it here in a minute. Um, and then we also need the bronze, right? So the bronze blend, we combine that together. And we actually get four for three copper and one tin. And bam. So with this put together, we should now have enough to make the multi-servo press. And with that, we should be able to start taking some components that we have and actually getting a profit on our little bit of workload. And I think my goal now will be to get enough EMC to create the full automation for this. So just like that, I have a multi-servo press. Now this is gonna be super important. Um, so I'm gonna take this and I guess I can place it right here for now and then just hook our pipe up to the back. Um, but what we're gonna be doing with this is not exactly using it to make the cogs or gears just yet. So we will, we will do that soon. But what we need to actually make, 
I believe is this. So we take the copper, we take these resources that we're doing, and we just put this inside of it, and that is going to generate a little bit extra. And I think doing this manually might be a little bit more effective uh, than doing the tree farm that we've been working on. Now for me to understand and get started with each of these, we are going to need four copper, that's exactly how much we need, four aluminum, which is the bauxite ore, and four iron to do this. And of course, we can just double the recipe given the amount of actual EMC we have and keep doing this until we run out of EMC. So right about there, I now have the ability to make about five sets of the basic mechanical essence. So I will get each and every one of these smelted up. And yeah, we are going to then take those ingredients and to combine them in their components. Now I will need a little extra iron for all of this because it does require nuggets here soon. We will not need nuggets because the, the actual servo press here, um, once we have this set up for gears, it won't require that uh, pesky little nugget there. So here we go. We'll have our copper. Then we go into the five gears and then the five aluminum gears craft that, which will get us the basic and five of those. And then we just need to do this. And this is going to give us a little bit of a boost of, of EMC as well. It's going to give us 16 of those, which is kind of nice. So put that in the multi servo and give it some time to do its process, which without any upgrades takes quite a while. It is a little bit of a grind getting started, but not too bad. I've definitely, I've definitely fared worse. And just like that, we have our first basic mechanical crystal. Yes, and uh, this right here isn't quite used for anything, but these are actually used for things, um, such as this uh, EMC link, right? And things like that. So that'll be something that we'll definitely keep our eyes on and figure out what all we're gonna need from that. But in our quest, we get 16 more of these, and those are quite nice rewards, as that is 139,000 EMC there, which is pretty useful. So now we can pretty much pull a single stack of all of these out and continue to make these by hand for now, but I really should probably use all this to make all of the resources to get all of this stuff started and produced on its own with the fabricators. So now that we've basically crafted that main part, it does open up into the next chapter and I might as well grab these items. Believe it or not, we've already made it to chapter two. Um, because of that. Now, we don't have it automated, so keep that in mind, but I will get my hands on some diamonds, diamond ore, some lapis, which is all real nice, netherrack, and bone. Um, even zinc, which is going to be useful for getting into crate. We get some cactus, and this is kind of nice because sand was going to be a thing that was going to be a little tedious, uh, but now that we have diamond... I think it might be a little bit easier. Nope, sand is still going to be a literal grind. <laughs> uh, for right now, anyways, until we get access to transmutation, which appears to happen down the road with the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, we could potentially push through to tier three just to get those items, but I think it's still best if we just solely focus on getting the basics done and at least get that automated. Now, while I have things smelting up, I should go ahead and make the covalences. Um, these are going to be definitely useful as we are going to need these to make the EMC links and they're also going to require invar plates. Um, so I'm going to need four of those. And I think the setup that I'm going to be trying to strive for is going to require four fabricators and then four redstone smelters, four multi uh, or four servo presses. And then we're also gonna need four EMC links and well, technically four pipes, we may need more than that as everything else should be able to send back and forth to each other. Now, just to test some things out, right here is the basic EMC link. And we're, like I said, gonna need four of these. Um, so an export item has not been set. We just basically need to right click. It looks like that item on it. So for example, iron. And this should now be able to export iron. Um, now, I want to use pipes. We could use hoppers or many other things. I don't think we have enough ENC just yet to start messing with that. But let's see. Can I go from one inventory directly to another within one pipe? I think we can. So that's going to be pretty nice. And then in here, we actually get some rewards, some more pipe and stuff like that. Um, and we get a wrench. Um, the wrench allows us to disconnect and connect. 
I believe we can also facade with this mod, which is pretty cool. It has been quite a minute since I've played with pretty pipes, so it might take a, a little bit to get used to. Do I put the extraction on the on this to allow it to work? Doesn't seem like it's pulling at all. Will it only pull from the bottom? Uh huh. I think I've got it figured out. Pipes can go ahead and go in, and that can actually be one like right up next to it. I think will work just fine. If we put this right here, that still should work, no problem. So we can kind of compact this. But on this low extraction, I needed to set this to uh, items and filter are allowed versus disallowed. And then I can set this to the basic EMC. Very simple. Make sure I also tell this what it's sending. And you can see it automatically will send. And then as soon as we place in this, it should stop sending and only send and let one in, which is exactly what we want. So funny enough, I just went ahead and crafted up the dies and I was like, do I need an unpacking die? Cause I was thinking I was going to need to unpack the iron ingots to make nuggets. And then I realized, no, it should be a lot more simple than this. All I need is two of these regular dies here, two of the gear dies and one rod die, not an unpacking die. Just kind of wastes some material there but it's going to work out in the end. So yeah, all in all, I thought I was gonna need four of each machine. I should only need three and then four of the EMC links, allowing one of them to be what actually inserts the items. So unexpectedly, I just completed the main chapter uh, just by putting the items in my inventory. <laughs> um, however, I've still, I've still gotta get it automated. That is the main process here. And just crafting up the machines, that's taken some time. So I now have just about everything ready to go. So all of the prior stuff that we talked about with this, I have all three of my ingredients and I kind of overdid it with uh, some of the things that I thought I needed. I thought I needed more sick control fabricators. Totally did not only really need one and I'm gonna try and set this up and explain it. So I have my iron and then I have my bauxite and then copper, which you can see is already lined up in this machine. And then over here inside of the pipe, I have my extraction, make sure it's set to the proper uh, container and then made sure it's set to allow and then a stack to one. Um, now that is then going to export its smelted product, which will be the actual ingot into the multi-servo press. Now each of these presses are gonna do a different thing. This is going to be copper. So copper needs to be turned into a rod. Um, and then this right here is iron that needs to be turned into a gear once it receives four. And then this needs to be turned into a gear once we receive enough of the copper. Well, actually no, copper's, copper's the one that needs to be a rod, isn't it? So I have this completely back, backwards. Um, so either way, uh, this is how it's gonna be set up. Now in the middle, we want this to extract here. We want this to send to this middle area. All of this needs to get sent to the middle. And where it's gonna be sent is to a sequential fabricator that I'm gonna be placing backwards. And the reason why I want it placed backwards like this is because you actually can't configure the face of the machine, which kind of makes it a little bit more awkward to deal with. So I want the back to be where everything gets exported. And that means all the other sides need to be imports. And this is going to be taking all of our ingredients right here and making this. Now, I'm not quite sure as I've never used this before, I'm not sure exactly how this gets set up. Do I have to drag the items in? I don't know. Copper rods, for example. Do we drag this in to set the recipe? It looks like we do. And then gears. So we need an aluminum gear. I'm pretty sure it's set up like that. Aluminum on the top. And an iron gear on the bottom. And then we'll check that. And this is what it's going to be generating. And now when it's done generating that and crafting it, it should export it right here to the back. And that's where we're gonna have the multi-servo press. And the multi-servo press is then going to take it and it's going to take it from the back here and it's going to send it to the top and directly send that into an EMC link, which then completes the loop and allows us to have this full thing automated. And back here, I'm just using six sterling dynamos. Of course, we're gonna have better power later on, but that should be enough power, at least for right now, to get all of this powered up and 
get this bad boy up and running. Yeah. So without further ado, I guess it's time to fill this thing with coal. Now this is gonna be incredibly slow, but it is going to be an automated source of EMC. And so all of this work that we've just put into it should hopefully pay off. Of course, that's the goal. So that already did its first press. And so now inside here, we should have the copper rods, which it looks like we have a lot more copper rods than anything else. Even though you would think that they should go at the same pace because this is going to require four and four. So this is about to do its press. I'm just kind of excited. So that's going to go. And then the sequential fabricator should do its thing. There we go. And that created the mechanical essence. So that should send it through. The only thing I'm worried about though is this. Ah, man, this seems to be making it at a increased pace compared to everything else. Well, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. Our EMC is definitely now increasing with this little farm. And uh, yeah, keeping an eye on this, it's definitely, uh, definitely working and chugging along, which is way better than this manual tree farm, I can tell you that. And uh, we should also, as you can see, always end up having one here until we get this thing upgraded later on. Um, and the faster we can make these machines, the faster this whole thing will go and the faster we should be able to produce EMC. So that's going to be pretty sick. So long as we can maintain our coal, which we're just going to have to manually be breaking it here soon. Or we could set up automation for a pulverizer to pulverize it, but we don't have the speed for a pulverizer. It's just too slow at the moment. But without further ado, I'm excited to see what this pack has in store. There's going to be a little bit more to get into for sure. This is only the first episode and uh, we're about to get into Create an Immersive, which is really gonna open the floodgates of automation. And uh, I can't wait to do that with you guys next episode. So if you would, be sure to click that subscribe button uh, and ring that notification bell. So that way you guys uh, will be notified when I publish the next episode. And if guys, if that's something you're interested in, as well, be sure to check out the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, where we have awesome perks over there. If you're looking to support this channel in any way, I would really appreciate it. And guys, of course, it is now time to thank the awesome supporter of the day. Speaking of supporters, and that amazing thank you is going to go to Handon. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible and guys i thank you so very much for watching of course i will see you in the next one comment down below if there's any way you would have done this differently and or what you enjoyed the most about today's episode also if you want to roast me feel free to do it as i, I do love learning from you guys' roasts and as always yet again thanks for watching